Welcome back. I've got a 7 0 hook. I am going to make a spinnerbait. And um, in case you guys haven't noticed, I am clearly a fan of marling baits. I've got a lot of the things that I've learnt about lure making from his channel. Brilliant channel. If you don't know who he is, I'll link it below. Uh, top bloke. He's got like three or four hundred thousand subscribers. Makes heaps of different um, lures or baits as they call them in America and they're great. Anyway, he makes um, spinner baits. Makes a wire himself, which I'm gonna have a crack at as well. But essentially, uh, blade, wire, tow point, wire, into a timber hard body and he puts trebles under it. Now, one of the bonuses of a spinner bait is that you've got a lead head and the hook up here and that hook's in line with all this wire. So when the wire pushes through snags, the hook doesn't hook up. Once you put trebles under it, you sort of lose that. So I'm going to try and make a spinner bait with the timber body, but I want to embed the wire hooked to the hook in case we hook any good fish. Sort of quality drawing, Kingsley. Um, sort of something like that. So I'm going to sit the hook down, have a look at that, see what I come up with, and I'll get back to you guys. So this is what I've come up with. Before you laugh at my hook, let's pretty pretty close to what it is so don't laugh at my hook drawing <laughs> i've just gone with a pretty simple almost i guess it's more like a vibe sort of shape body but really don't want it to do much it's going to be thin a lot like a vibe um it's gonna it's got a big belly on it because it's gonna have a lot of lead right here to keep it upright as uh spinner baits do have the lead right at the bottom um I'm going to hook, might have to drill a bit out of here, but I'm actually going to have the wire through there, drop it in, and then uh, glue it. Uh, it's going to sit better towards the top, so I might have a slot through the top. I was originally thinking I'd drill a hole through here and have a slot in the bottom and slide it up in, but I think this is going to be easier to have a slot in there i mean if it's connected and glued the fish is hooked here the weight is through the wire anyway it's only holding the timber on but i'll sort of consider that as i get closer and look at the timber shape and whatnot so yeah i'm looking at uh thin just a bit of a body shape probably an eye here somewhere a bit of a gill pattern something something like that maybe Maybe even a fin. We'll see how we go. I don't know what sort of pattern. Um, I'm going to be chasing cod with this. So probably a simple, probably just a simple crisscross green black sort of something real simple. Yellow belly, white and yellow belly, whatever. I don't want to go too over the top, but yeah, something like that. I'm thinking I might carve the gills in it. Let's we'll have a look and see how we go. But. I'm going to make some copies of this and uh, yeah, we'll get started. I've printed off a couple of copies. 17%. You guys have dropped to 17% already. Print off a couple of copies, cut one out and stuck it onto this. It's just a chunk of pine. I'm going to go with pine. Yeah, it's readily available. It's solid enough. It's, it's buoyant. So I'll put the weight in the belly and that should help keep it upright. Obviously, the toe point's above so that toe point's up here. That'll help keep it upright as well. So we'll sort of, sort of uh, have a look. Let's uh, get this cut out and have a think about the shape. We'll draw that in, cut that out and get going. Then once we've done that, we'll probably twist up the wire.
before we go any further with this, I want to do some carving and stuff, but I want to make the wire so I can drill this wire hole in um, before I start carving here and then might have to clamp it and wreck the carving. So I'm going to go work on the wire now. We'll come back, uh, drill the hole in the hook slot, and then we'll carve the outside of this and continue. But that's the shape. Nice and rounded. It's not smooth, but it's rounded. We'll smooth it off because we're going to have to fill in and do a lot of filling and sanding anyway, so no point now. But yeah, pretty happy with that so far. So it's uh, not exactly as I envisioned, but it's damn close. Really close. 0.9mm stainless steel wire. I've got a ton of it. The reason is I'm going to put it in here and wind it. Now, I have this wire. Now, a lot of you will be going, oh, that's not how you're meant to do it. You're meant to do your loop where you want it and whatnot and all that sort of stuff, and you'd kind of be right. But also, you'd be wrong, because I made it this long as this is what I'm gonna treat as my single strand. So this is my starting point. So I'm using this twisted wire, which is now 1.8 mil of stainless, which will handle a much bigger cod and also hold a lot more stability as my starting point. So I'm going to fold this in half and create my toe point and start building the template from there. far below. Right, I'm going to put that in there like that. See what we can come up with doing this. Right. So we've got that. Now I need to put this bit in it. Normally, what Nate does is uh, twist it by hand, then puts that loop in, then twists the bottom half by um, by drill. But I'm not doing that. So let's see. How good I can get this bend. <laughs> right, if I hold those pliers like that and go around on itself. It's why it's solider than it looks now, it's all twisted up like this. Not perfect, but that's plenty close to the angles I had. Might just uh, bend this down a bit. Even the distance for these is almost spot on, look at that. Just, just above, just above, so pull it down like that. Jeez, that's pretty close. Got to match that because that's where the hook is. So this will just sit higher. That's not a problem. So this will work. So we're going to figure out how we're going to hook this to the hook and slot it up and down. We have to drill our hole and cut our slot. I used the uh, burr bit on the drum to cut down after I've marked uh, with the hook. I had already drilled in there, I re-drilled that bigger once I got it started with the burr bit to guide it. So now it should all slot, oh and I drilled a lead hole. We should be able to slot this in here. Got it. 
got the wire down. Try not to hook ourselves. I'm tracking it to get as far as the wire goes. Twist the hook over. Ooh. And, uh, what I want is to line all this stuff up this way. very late, it's almost midnight, but I want to get this done because where the hook and the, the hook's twisted into this uh, tow wire here it's going to be glued in with super glue and stuff, but just to be sure I want to put a dob of um, epoxy right in the bottom there to sort of hold the hook joint still and really firm into the timber so that's why I'm sitting out here in the freezing cold doing this So I'll get all the wires sort of set in with the uh, super glue. Which having the blades on doesn't help at all. Okay, so now it's starting to look bang on. See, in around where the hook one is there. I don't want it to run straight out the bottom here. Pretty much it's just sitting on top because it's cold. So if you ever have trouble with um if you ever have trouble with epoxy that's too firm like this is, it won't get into where you want it. Um epoxy is more viscous when it's hot or warm. So Just warm it up a little bit. It'll flow. It'll flow way better. Easy to handle that is. It's actually running. You can see it's disappearing down. Running down in around where it needs to be. I'll sand all that off tomorrow. I'll fill this tomorrow with um baking soda and super glue but I wanted this uh, to get right in around the connection between the hook and the wire so just to really make the point between the fish and your line as solid as possible so your line's hooked here it's a straight four twist wire threaded through and now epoxied uh, this Aerodite's rated to 130 kilos. It's not a cod that's going to break that. And that should also help hold this timber on. Uh, there's no weight being transferred through the timber, so it shouldn't be an issue anyway. Fill that in tomorrow, shape it, paint it. For now, we're just going to leave that overnight. It's it's gone. Now we're using that, but though. The epoxy was sitting on top, that warmth has really just let it meld right in and conform to the shape so it should be all around the wire and stuff now, it should be spot on. If your epoxy doesn't work, heat her up. Don't overheat it, you can burn it, but just slowly 
pass past it and you'll see as it warms up um, and you'll know when it's viscous enough don't keep going if it starts bubbling stop good morning how are we guys look at that that is coming along nicely so we've got the blades hanging this is all set in here look at that look at that set set toe point from here so I'm about to do the soda and super glue fill this up and um, I'll seal it with super glue the timber and we can actually drop that in the water and see what it does Ultra thin super glue to seal. I've got the shape down. Being pine, like it doesn't even stand out that well. That much. It doesn't even stand out that much. Um, unpainted. Uh, at the bottom, nice and smooth. Once I've got a couple of coats of paint on this, it'll look uh, like a single piece. People will wonder how that's in there. Well, I'd hope so. Well, they've watched this video and they'll know for sure. Thin super glue. This will actually penetrate the grain of the pine and seal it. And then we're going to go and dump her in the water and see what it does. Don't breathe it in and get it all over your face. It's really not good for you. Oh, there's the burn. But once you get a good layer of super glue on your finger, the burn's gone. I mean, I've got to do some carving yet, but I'm not going to carve until I know. I've got this right. That is a sealed waterproof piece of timber. Wipe the super glue with a rag. Oh, rag. Watch this bit of rag here, no super glue on it. Just do that. It's uh, glued together. Right, that's how much liquid was sitting there. If you don't take that off, next time you come to pull your lid off, good luck. Tie this on the rod and go and see what it does. Carb sanded and sealed. It's down to 16% for a full battery. This is left you guys filming. Right, so I've sanded, it's sealed, we're ready to put the white paint on. Come on guys, you gotta stop going flat. Alright, it's white now. Bang. Because you guys decided that you were going to run out of battery while I was painting. We're going to jump in now and do some colours. I still don't know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to wing it. So let's see what that means. Or what that means? We know what wing it means. Let's see what that creates.
it's uh, cold and wet and miserable. It's been three weeks, two weeks since I finished this spinnerbait, the hard body spinnerbait. I've got it in the car, I've come down the river. We've had a lot of rain, we've had some high levels of rain over a short period, filthed up, um, filled all the rivers. The river here is still high, but as you can hopefully see, the clarity is really good. I can see a bit of log out there. Um, you know, like it looks crystal clear here, obviously not crystal clear. But hopefully that means the fish can see the lures pretty easy. I'm gonna hop in. I'm gonna start with the hard body spinnerbait that I made. What we're gonna do is hop in the kayak. It's uh, already afternoon and it gets dark about quarter past five. So we've literally only a few hours, a couple of hours, and then it's dark. So we're gonna jump on the water and see how we go. Look at that. Let's bring it over a bit closer. Look at that. It sits exactly the way it should. There's enough weight in the belly to sink it. Just sinks down. Yeah, I'm not going down there. Looking like it's going to be a short session. Because I am not going down those rapids back there. Oh man. And it's actually really hard to fish with this amount of flow. Because all it wants to do it's pushing me along at way faster than I want to be fishing. So even if I wasn't retrieving and I'm just towing, just straight lining to my spinnerbait, I am drifting faster than I want to be retrieving my spinnerbait. So it's really not ideal for fishing. So I'm going to have a bit more of a play around in this hole here, then I'm back to where I put in and and hop out because uh, I'm definitely not going down that, that's insane. And going up from where I put in is equally as insane. So, yeah. and felt like you hear it. Yep, again. And now I'm just a half ass bump. Wasn't even retrieving it. There's something sitting in there. Is it like either grab the blade and not the lure or come on. Uh, I'm definitely in amongst all the sticks, that's for sure. Come on. Damn it, that was two goes. Yep. Oh, three goes. 